Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm excited to announce that this video is opening a series of two, maybe three more videos on the topic that raises a lot of discussions as climate change hits stronger and stronger. And the topic is carbon markets. In particular, today we're gonna talk about voluntary carbon markets. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know what is it and how it works, what is traded on these markets, and why is it even beneficial for climate? So, how it all started? In 1989, the American electric power production firm AES Corporation decided to finance an agri-forest project in Guatemala, investing $2 million. The aim of the project was to offset the emissions of a new power plant that the company had built in Connecticut by planting 50 million trees. In simple words, the company knew that the new power plant is going to emit a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. And since the company was positioning itself like innovative company looking for greener energy solutions, so this move of offsetting their emissions was actually a very good fit for their overall positioning, for their overall strategy. So they didn't have to invest in this project, they didn't have to plant the trees in Guatemala, but they wanted to. This project was the first documented carbon offset project in history. And this project announced the beginning of carbon markets, or to be more specific, so-called voluntary carbon markets. Voluntary carbon market is a market where a company or individual can buy carbon offsets absolutely voluntarily, just because they want to, not because they are doing this to comply with some legal obligations. So why does this thing even work? Why this actually can help to fight climate change? Since we only have one atmosphere, it doesn't really matter where emissions are occurred, because soon enough they're gonna spread around the Earth, creating the greenhouse effect. And following the same logic, since it doesn't matter where emissions are released, it also doesn't matter where you reduce the emissions. Therefore, the reduction of CO2, no matter how it's done or where it's done, results in the same climate benefits. The argument behind carbon trading is that the best way to take action on climate change is to reduce emissions where it's easier or least costly to do so, which is often the same thing. For example, let's imagine a power plant in Germany. Good one, using cutting-edge technologies, using the latest practices on operational efficiency. And to reduce greenhouse gas emissions on such a plant, it might be quite expensive. According to some benchmarks, up to $40 to reduce one ton of CO2 equivalent. And let's imagine, for example, waste to energy project in Kenya that is using more basic technologies that is much less efficient in minimizing its greenhouse gas emissions. So considering lower state of technological advancement and that prices in Kenya are in general lower, in this case to reduce emissions it's cheaper, somewhat around $10 per one ton of CO2 equivalent. In this case, if power plant in Germany wants to make positive impact on climate, they not necessarily have to decrease their own greenhouse gas emissions. They can purchase carbon offsets from the energy project in Kenya. This money will go on technological innovation of the energy project and will bring the same climate benefits, but at lower cost. Now let's talk a bit more about what exactly is traded on those markets. I already mentioned offsetting of greenhouse gas emissions, which is basically a process of reduction in emissions of CO2 or other greenhouse gases in order to compensate for emissions produced elsewhere in the world. So in case of AES Corporation, they were conducting this process in Guatemala to compensate for emissions made in Connecticut. As a result, this process generates carbon offsets. So carbon offset is generated greenhouse gas reduction by a project designed specifically for this purpose. And one carbon offset is the reduction of one metric ton of CO2 or its equivalent. But it's not exactly what's traded on the voluntary carbon market. Because carbon offset is like physical substance, it's like physical reduction. And what's traded is a tradable certificate that calls carbon credit. And generally speaking, one carbon credit represents one carbon offset that you can buy or sell. So, how carbon credits occur? How they enter the voluntary carbon market? Let's take, for example, a mangrove reforestation project, which is a great project, by the way, because mangroves absorb a large amount of CO2, more than any other tree. Moreover, mangroves' roots prevent erosion caused by extreme weather, which helps protect the coastlines. They purify the ocean and filter the water for marine life, like corals and seagrasses. These seagrasses in turn feed species like turtles. 
All in all, Minecraft reforestation seems to be a great thing to do. If you are a founder of such a project, you know that more financial resources you have, more impact you can make. So one of the ways to get access to additional financials is to start selling carbon offsets. To do so, first you're gonna need to reach out to one of independent certification bodies. Their function is to make sure that project fits required criteria, required standards, to be qualified as a project generating carbon offsets that can be sold on voluntary carbon market. Those independent certification bodies also provide methodology to assess how much exactly carbon offsets is generated by the project. And typically going further, they will navigate audits to make sure that project will comply with standards in the future. For example, organization called Vera so far holds the largest carbon standard on voluntary market. It calls Verified Carbon Standard. Another big program is Gold Standard. On their side, you also can check how to certify a project using their standard and what are the benefits for the project to do so. Voluntary carbon market doesn't have any single regulator and is highly fragmented, which means there are many different agencies with somewhat different standards that can verify the carbon offset project. And standards are important because carbon offsets can be either high quality or low quality. In this video, I'm not going to go too deep into standards, but I just want to mention several of the most important ones. For example, additionality. The project only brings additional benefit for climate if it goes beyond business as usual. If without the money that a company or individual pays for the offsets, this project wouldn't happen, for example. And secondly, there has to be really precise definition of how much emissions otherwise without the project would be emitted. So the baseline has to be defined really precisely, which is also quite a tricky task to do, you know? Third, ideally carbon offset had to be permanent. For example, if you want to grow a forest as a source of carbon offsets, you have to consider several nuances. If the trees get burned down or if the trees get cut and they basically die, they release CO2 back to the atmosphere. In this case, for example, there needs to be a contingency plan to replace fallen trees. There also needs to be a plan for the use of timber so it remains a carbon storage for the long term. Once you finish this step of project verification and validation, you're going to register your project in a specific database. There are several of them on the market, and typically the largest standards, like the ones I mentioned, for example, Vera and Gold Standard, they have their own registries. So if you chose those standards for your project, then this step is going to be quite easy. What the registry is? It is just a database that contains information on your project, and then going further, it's going to contain information on how many carbon credits were issued by the project, how many carbon credits were sold, and so on. This registry is required, for example, to make sure that there is no double counting, that the same carbon credits were not sold twice. And once you've done all of that, you can finally start selling your carbon credits to the emitters willing to offset their emissions. You can do it via brokers or exchanges. You can also use specific aggregators who combine information on different carbon credit projects on their site. Or you can do it even directly to the emitters if you want to promote your project using your own marketing skills and budgets. As with any product, higher quality offsets cost more, and the price range of carbon offsets that you can face on the voluntary market is actually quite wide. Now let's summarize a little bit. Voluntary carbon markets occurred in the late 90s. The only units traded there are carbon credits. And important note, carbon credits on voluntary carbon markets, often called voluntary emission reduction credits, to distinguish them from other types of markets. There is no direct regulation from government, and standards are defined by independent certification bodies. On this market, any organization or individual, anyone who wants to offset their emissions, can buy carbon credits. Price range is really wide, because on the market there are different standards, there are different projects, there are many of them, and that's why prices rise significantly as well. I've seen prices starting from less than $1 per carbon credit to higher than $100. The scattered pattern of standards and lack of proper regulation are major reasons why voluntary markets get criticized, and partially this is fair. But it's also worth mentioning that these days, voluntary markets became much more mature. 
Standards are getting much better, process of purchasing carbon offsets is getting easier, more understandable, and moreover, learnings that came from voluntary markets became super valuable to build the second and now the biggest type of carbon markets. Compliance carbon markets. And this is the topic for my next video. In the next video, I will review compliance markets across pretty much the same dimensions as I used for the voluntary carbon market, and I will also compare sizes of those markets between each other. But for today, this is it. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope it was useful. If it was useful, if you liked it, don't forget to put your like and to subscribe. It helps my channel a lot and I really appreciate your feedback. And also, if you have any particular questions on carbon markets that you want me to cover in this series, just let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys. Thanks and see you soon.